How's it going everybody? So in this video, I want to cover set timer by function name and set timer by event, which are two functions in Unreal Engine that I have found to be incredibly useful in a lot of different scenarios. We're going to talk about the basics of how to set them up, their differences, and we're going to give a few examples of how they're commonly used. So one way these are commonly used are to create delays, and we'll talk about the benefit of using a timer over the delay node that you might be used to. We're also going to make a literal timer, or in this case, a counter. As you can see in the top left hand corner of my viewport, it's just counting up an integer every second. And finally, we're going to show how timers are used to make automatic weapons by taking the first person gun and making it automatic. So let's jump right in. Right now, I'm just inside of an actor that I've named BP underscore example timer. And you can see I have the two functions here. Now, at their core, they really do the same thing with a few minor differences. And we'll cover those differences more in depth as we get further along into this video. So for demonstration purposes, let's just start with set timer by function name. So you can see we have a few different variables here to set. And basically the way this works is we give it the name of a function or an event. As you can see, when you hover over this, it says can be a K2 function or a custom event. It doesn't have to be a function. And then we set this time variable. Now this time variable is the amount of time it's going to take for that function or event to run. So let's create a simple delay right now. We'll create a custom event and we'll name it simple delay. And then what we'll do is we'll plug this into begin play. And then in this function name, we're going to type in simple delay. And it has to be spelt the exact same way that you named the function or the event. Now what we'll do is we'll print string. We'll type delay finished. And we'll put the time to, I don't know, we'll make it a two second delay. Make sure to plug this in. And if I compile, I have the actor in my world already right here. So if I hit play, You'll see after two seconds, it says delay finished. Now you might be wondering why this is beneficial over the delay node. And the main reason is that it doesn't hold up the execution line. So if I put a print string right after this node and I type in begin play, you're going to see that this is going to fire immediately. And then it's going to do this after two seconds. So if I hit play, it says begin play. And then it prints delay finished. If I were to use a delay, and do something like, I don't know, we'll delay two seconds, and then we'll just manually call this simple delay. And then we'll call event begin play, you're gonna see this obviously holds up the entire execution line. So I hit play, nothing happens. And then after two seconds, they both fire at the same time. And this can be problematic in certain scenarios. So if you're finding issues with the delay node, a good alternative might be one of the timer nodes. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, you can also make literal timers or counters, and you would do so by checking this looping Boolean here, which means that this is going to loop this event over whatever interval you set here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this variable I've created here, it's called time elapsed, and it's just an integer. And we're going to rename this something like counter. And then each time it runs, we're going to increment this variable and we're going to print it out on screen. So if I compile and I hit play, you're going to see that nothing's happening. And this brings me to a very important point. When using set timer by function name, if the name of the function or event that you put in here isn't valid or doesn't correspond to a function or event. So you can see I renamed this counter. It's simply not going to do anything. It's going to fail. And this is called a silent failure. And these can be pretty problematic because you can wind up with broken code and you're not really going to have any hints or clues as to why the code broke. And in most cases, the way that I've encountered this problem is the way that you just saw. So later on in my project, I might go through, clean up my code and rename events so that they're more fitting for whatever they're doing. But if you rename an event, you have to go back to the timer that's referencing it and rename it there too. Otherwise, it's simply going to break. And there have been times where I've done so and not known why my code all of a sudden isn't working. So be careful of that. And better yet, if you're using events, you really might want to consider using set timer by event, which basically, again, does the exact same thing, except instead of defining a function or event name, you have this output delegate. So if I plug this in here, you're going to see if I hit play. Well, actually, we have to set this to one and then to looping. You're going to see that it basically works the exact same way. It's now counting up 
as it was in the beginning of the tutorial. And if I unplug this and I take set timer by function name, rename this to counter, set this to one and looping. It's the exact same thing. So the one major difference between these two things, besides the way that you define the function or event you're trying to run, is that this set timer by function name node has this object reference. And what that means is you can set a timer on an event in a different class. Now, I personally have never found a use for doing this. I'm not saying that there isn't one or that it's bad to do. I just have yet to encounter a real world scenario where I've wanted to do that. But just know that if you have a reference to another object in your game, you can set a timer on one of its functions or events using this node, whereas you can't do it with the set timer by event node. So before we move on, I just wanna point out that there's a couple of other variables we can set on these timers. You can see if we click these drop downs, we have initial start delay and initial start delay variance, and they do exactly what you would think they do. The initial start delay will basically say how long it takes for the function to run for the first time. So if you have a looping function and you want some variance on when it runs for the first time, you can set that here. And you can set an initial start delay variance, which will sort of randomize it. Now, again, I've had very little use for this initial start delay variance, but I will show you a potential use for this initial start delay when we get to the gun, which let's do that now. So I'm in the first person template, and what I'm gonna do is search in the content folder for BP underscore weapon component. And this is where all the firing logic is handled. This is spawned in onto the player on begin play. And you can see here that we have this enhanced input action for shooting, and this corresponds to the left mouse button. So real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the sound because I don't wanna deafen anybody. And then we have to fix something with this enhanced input action. So right now, this is set up to run whenever you click the left mouse button, but there's no way to track when you release the left mouse button, which we need to do for an automatic weapon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on this and it's gonna bring us to that input action. And we're gonna go down here to triggers and you can see that we have pressed. We're gonna add an element and we're going to choose released. So now if we go back to our weapon component, what's going to happen is this triggered pin is going to fire both when we click the left mouse button and when we release the left mouse button. So if I hit play right now and I pick up the gun and I click the left mouse button, I'm holding it right now. If I release, it shoots again, which obviously we don't want. So let's go back into the weapon component. And what we can do is we can switch on this Boolean because this is going to correspond to whether or not the mouse button is clicked or not. So let's do a branch. Let's go in here like this. And now we can start setting up our timer and make this automatic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom event and I'm gonna call it fire. And I'm gonna plug it in right here to the spawn first person projectile. And then I'm gonna call set timer by function name. You could also use event. I'm just gonna use function name in this case. And we're gonna type in fire. We're gonna set this to looping and then you would put whatever you want your fire rate to be in here. And this is in seconds, so you're gonna want it to fire multiple times per second. So we'll do something like, I don't know, 0 0.15. Compile, and there's gonna be a few problems here. So if I pick up the gun and I press, first off, there was a little bit of a delay before it started firing. I don't know if you were able to see it. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But also, this is just gonna fire forever. There's no way to stop this from firing. And that brings me to this output pin, which we have yet to talk about in this video. Now, this returns a timer handle structure, and this is basically a variable that you can use to store a reference to this timer. So if I come off of here and I promote this to a variable, I can now call this fire timer. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with this variable. So let's move over here real quick and let's just look at a few of the most useful things you can do. So if I come off of this, the first thing you can see, which we're gonna use in a minute is pause timer by handle. And when I call this, it's going to pause this timer as you would expect. We can also make sure that this is a valid timer like so. And basically what that means is that this is actually set to a timer reference and it's not invalidated because you can actually invalidate the timer handle. You can also clear and invalidate the timer handle, which will also stop it and set it to a null value. And that's useful in certain cases. And these are the nodes I probably use most commonly with timer handles. There's a bunch of other ones, and 
I suggest you look into them. But for now, this is all we're going to cover with this timer handle. And before we even make use of it, I want to show you an alternative method you can use to stopping this timer. And that is simply to pause timer by function name. And in here, we can type fire. And this will work exactly how you would expect. I hit play. It's firing. I release. It stops firing. Now, this has the same caveat as set timer by function name, where if you don't put the correct name in here, it will give you a silent failure. And now you have two different nodes where you have to make sure you have the correct name in. And it's just more error prone in general. So I typically will use a timer handle. So what we'll do is we'll take this fire timer handle and we'll call pause timer by handle. We'll plug this in like so. And typically when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to make sure that it's a valid timer. So we'll type is valid timer handle and we'll do a branch. It's getting a little cluttered here. Let's move this. Okay, and this will work the exact same way. So if I compile, I pick up the gun, I start shooting, I release, and stop shooting. Now let's talk about that delay that happens when I first click. So I click, there's a delay, and it starts firing. Typically with a gun, that's not how you want it to behave. You want it to fire once and then delay each interval. So there are two ways you can solve this. One of the more common ways is to simply call the fire function before you set the timer. So we can do this. And that delay is now gone. But I've been doing some experimenting and I found another way that you can do this. And I'm gonna say right off the bat that I don't know if there are any hidden caveats to doing what I'm about to do. Let me just show you before I talk too much. So in this initial start delay, you can actually set this to the negation of this time variable. So basically this variable with a negative in front of it. So for example, I could type negative 0.15. The reason I say I don't know if this is error prone in some way is because typically with time related variables, you don't set negative values. It's kind of weird, but I was playing with this and I wanted to point out that this will in fact work. So if I go in and I pick up the gun, oh, uh, well, let me get rid of this. pick up the gun and there's no initial start delay. Now, one problem with this is if you set this to a value that's more negative than this value. So for example, if I had this set to one and I set this to negative two, this is now just not going to do anything. There's going to be an initial start delay of one and this will basically be ignored. So what you could do is you could promote this to a variable and in a gun system, you would probably want this to be a variable anyway, so that on all the children, you can set the uh, fire rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this fire rate. And what I would probably do in an actual weapon system is some math so that I can actually set it in terms of uh, shots per second rather than seconds. But that's outside of the scope of this video. And to avoid messing this value up, we can just take this and multiply it by negative one like so. And then we can take this fire rate and set it to whatever we want. So I'm going to set it back to 0.0 or 0.15. I'm going to compile and it's going to be the exact same thing. And that really is the basics of how you could use set timer by function name or set timer by event to make an automatic weapon. Now, before I end the video, I want to talk about a few things to be careful of when using these nodes. So when setting this time variable, if you set it too low, it will start to behave weirdly. And if you set it extremely low, like if you go in here and you do something crazy, it will literally crash the engine. So be careful about what you put in this time variable. When you start getting below your delta time or the time in between frames, it starts to get a little bit weird. Now, the next point that I'm gonna cover is a little bit over my head, but it's been somewhat of a controversial topic, I guess. And I went into the Unreal Slackers Discord and asked about it because again, it's a little bit over my head. But when using one of these nodes in place of event tick, so so essentially taking one of these and making them so that they have a function or event that ticks every frame, it's going to be more expensive than using event tick. That is according to people in the Unreal Slackers Discord. So don't take my word for it. If you have questions about it, I suggest checking out that Discord because there's a lot of really smart people in there. But in general, I typically don't use these to replace event tick for the sake of optimization. I'll only do so if it's the right tool for the job. So 
one case where I will use these is where I'm frequently starting or stopping the timer. And yes, you can start and stop event tick, but the thing is you only get one event tick, whereas you may have multiple different timers in a given actor. So rather than having nested branches or sequences on event tick, I find that there are times where using timers that tick really fast work better than using event tick. Again, it's not for the sake of optimization. And according to people who are way smarter than me, you're gonna lose optimization if you use this over Eventic. So keep that in mind. But yeah, that's really all there is to this tutorial, guys. I know it was a short and simple one, but you'll probably see me use these nodes a lot in future videos. So I wanted to make a video covering them. So if you like this video, please consider slapping a like on it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments down below. For future videos from me, consider subscribing, and I wish you all the best of luck with your projects.